Whether he knew that or not, I guess. That's a good start. I want to hear what you can say to that. Yeah. You're not supposed to do this during the thing, so you got to start. So what? You got to do this before the really start. It's bad to do this when you're talking. All right, I'm good. Hey, Zach, Shannon Russell from the Career Journal. Can you start by addressing that you're taking the place of Michael Phelps and, and what that means to you to kind of step into that role and how important that spotlight is? Yeah, so I kind of got that question right after the race, and I was kind of thinking about that today because that's kind of a loaded question. Um, those are big shoes to fill, obviously. Um, but when I first started swimming overseas and beginning my international career with Team USA, I started at WUGS and Junior Worlds, and I didn't swim very good at, at first. It took me a while to learn how to go over there and compete and reperform that at the level that got me to those meets. And I realized in 2018 when I went over for Pan Packs that I was going over there to swim for me because – I was the one that got myself up in the morning and I was the one that sh shed the blood, sweat and tears and all of the effort that it took to get there. So um, I'm going to go over there and, and swim for me because this is my dream since since the Olympics or since I was seven to make the Olympic team for the U.S. Uh, in really any event. But as I got older, I, I wanted to go for the 200 fly and I'm grateful of the past that the U.S. has had in this event, just an absolute domination. I want to go over there and continue that. Um, but I'm gonna go over there and swim and have fun for me because that's that's when I swim at my best is because um, I I've, I was never forced into this sport. My parents always encouraged me to do it as long as I was having fun. And if I wasn't, then they they said, hey, if you're not gonna go and do this and put in the effort and do it right, then let us know. We'll pull you, we'll pull you out and let, put you in something else that you're gonna enjoy. And so I think that's kind of molded how I view the sport and how I do it. And I want to stay true to that and go out there and have fun and pursue my goal of coming home with a necklace. Zach, Arthur mentioned just how nervous or, you know, anxious you were leading up to, to this race. Is is that in large part because you knew you had a chance to do something special to, to win that event? Uh, yeah, so I, I kind of had a vision beforehand. Uh, I normally don't have stories like this, but this is kind of cool. Um, I, I'd, I'd prayed before asking for, you know, Obviously, this is a really nerve-wracking thing. I was mentally just like, I viewed 2016 as a failure, and that was kind of hard to come back from. And so going into 2020, I didn't, 2021, I didn't want that to happen again. I didn't want to have to go through that again. And so I was asking for, like, peace and understanding of what was going to happen. And I received a vision in the form of a dream that I was going to go and I was going to make the team. And as it came closer, I realized I knew I was going to win, which – I understand now kind of sounds a little cocky and arrogant going in, but it was just this calmness that I knew it's a solidifying fact, which is why I told Arthur and, uh, when I was about to go into the ready room, I said, next time you see me, I'm going to be a champ. Is I knew that to be a fact, and I was wondering about my time, and I, I realized it didn't matter because no matter what happened, I was going to come out on top. And so the nerves that came with that was the me thinking about failing and – then when I realized that failing just wasn't going to happen because it wasn't an option, then that's when I was able to embrace the Bruce Wayne to Batman transformation, as, as you referenced, and uh, flip that switch, and it was game mode and game time. Um, but we were talking, me and the other coaches, they said that there's nothing different physiologically between what goes on in your body, between nerves and excitement. So it's a mindset thing, too, of, oh, I'm really nervous for this race. It's like, no, you're not. You're excited. You've been training two years you got an extra year to train for this, so you're not nervous about this race. You're excited for it. And so that, that difference probably played a, a big impact, too. Uh, Zach, you touched on it already um, about the confidence, but where does um, that confidence come from? Um, does it usually just come from um, prayer or whatnot, or is there, you know, just how you were raised and always been a confident person? Um, I don't know. That's a good question. Uh, I think the experience that I've had, I've been in the situation before. I knew what to expect. I knew, I knew what the walkout was going to be like. I knew that people would be uh, loud and cheering in that environment, that the lights would be on. I knew what the pool was going to look like. Uh, I've swam at world finals before, so I knew what swimming under high-pressure situations was, swimming on a relay, anchoring, trying to go for a win. Uh, and all those different things kind of pulled and realized, me personally, that I was ready for that. I knew what to expect, so I wasn't distracted by any of that. I was more expecting and prepared and looking forward to that. And I knew what to and to not pay attention to. Um, and on top of that, I was going to have fun. And during the race, I was going to win the heat. 
not necessarily to make the team. I figured that would take care of itself. Uh, but I was just going out there to get my hand on the wall first. For both of you, uh, Zach, you go first. How did you attack getting that extra year? And what were the obstacles you faced in that extra year, being able to train and get in the pool and all that stuff? So I would say that Olympic trials started in January of 2020 and then just got extended through. And I always say that because they call it the Olympic trials, plural, not just because of all the events, but because of, especially if you're in the running to make the team, then you have the mental and emotional and physical state. And the mental and emotional starts well before the meet. You just have to manage that and be prepared for that. So you can, when you get to the physiological part, the, the racing, you're ready for it. Um, so having that extra year kind of wasn't good in that regard. Uh, I, you know, it was just an extra year to struggle with, you know, laying in bed, going, trying to go to sleep at night, wondering, wow, I could make the Olympic team in a year. Will it happen? I don't know. And so, like, tried not to think about that. So I just showed up whenever coach said practice was, and uh, I let him tell me what to do and when to do it. And between him and the strength coach who handled the weights, Jason, uh, I just let them handle the plan, and I just showed up at practice ready to work. Yeah, for me, that extra year was, I think that was the, best thing that could have happened to me. Back in 2020, I didn't really have a great season. So I didn't know what was gonna happen with qualifying for Olympics, with trials, with getting the cut. So having that extra year, I think helped me a lot since I was able to drop time, improve, and then at Europeans, which was my main focus back in 2020. Europeans is kind of comp the competition where Serbians qualify for Olympics. So that European championships in 2020 was supposed to happen in, I think April or May, and then it got canceled and I was like, I didn't know what to do because I didn't know how else to qualify for Olympics. That's kind of the meet we used to qualify. But then after that, Olympics got canceled too. So I was confused. I didn't know what to do. Should I continue swimming? Do I have another year in me to improve? So I kind of talked with the coaches and made a plan and decided to go for another year. And then they made it official that Europeans are going to happen in May of 2021, that Olympics are going to happen in uh, July, August of 2021. So then I came back here to Louisville, I was in Serbia for the whole period when COVID started. And then back in August, I came back to Louisville, started training here and had my mind on Olympics and just trained for that. And thankfully at Europeans, I was able to perform at my best and qualify for my first Olympic games in Tokyo. Sounds good, doesn't it? Like the Olympics, but like Olympic games. Well. Olympic, yeah. <laughs> so you know, So what are you guys both looking forward to in Tokyo? Oh, we're going to go to the uh, the village hidden in the leaves, and uh, we're going to go explore Tokyo. Um, I told him he should go to, I think it's Shibuti, something yeah, like that. Shibuya, yeah. something like the that. Tokyo Drift Park. Yeah, and so where they film Tokyo Drift, it's the, I think it's the most crowded intersection in the world, and that's where they drift through at the end of the movie and they don't hit anybody, which is miraculous. And so like, you can go there and like, be like, wow, that's where they drifted from. Um, so that's, that's exciting. Yeah, I mean, obviously our main focus is going to be swimming, but like when you're in Tokyo, you want to see a couple of things. So Eat some sushi, have some yeah, ramen. Yeah, sushi, the best sushi in the world. So it'll be fun. You mentioned, uh, you mentioned um, that this was your first Olympics that you're going to be a part of, Andre. Um, has that fully set in that you are an Olympian or is it still kind of uh, surreal? So first when I qualified, which was a month ago, it wasn't, it didn't feel real. I was just caught in the moment. I was focused on the competition and I just, I, I was talking to my coach, Chris, and he's like, yeah, you just made Olympics. You should be happy. And I, I still couldn't process it. I wasn't aware of what was happening. I was just kind of focusing on the meet and the next race. And then I came back home after that meet and kind of start talking to my family, friends. They're like, you're going to be an Olympian. You're going to go to the Olympics, which in my head, like, it was still like, like, it's cool, but I still wasn't fully aware of it. And then I came back here. I started training. Zach, came, Zach qualified. And I mean, I was so happy. And then I was like, damn, like, we're going to the Olympics. Like, this is the biggest competition for swimmers in the world. There's nothing, there's no bigger stage than that. So now I'm actually really excited. And I, what Zach said about going to sleep at night, now that I have this settled in, now I'm getting a little more nervous at night and kind of start thinking about it, but in a good way. So it'll be great. Sorry about that. No, it's okay. <laughs> Andre, how, does this make it sweeter for you knowing what you've been through with your health? 
Yeah, of course. Uh, I had some obstacles back in two end of 2019 that I didn't know if coming back, I had some surgery, so I didn't know if coming back from that surgery, I was going to be able to swim again. And there was a lot of things that I had to figure out. Uh, thankfully, everything went great. I was able to get back on my feet, get back in the pool within a couple, month or two. So that that's why I think back in 2020 probably wasn't the best year for me to perform, which is why it was a blessing for me to, to for me to have those Olympics. Unfortunately, it was pushed because of COVID, which is a terrible reason. But for me, that was good enough so that I could have another year of training and kind of get back to where I was before my surgery and then being able to qualify for these Olympics. For both of you again, whoever wants to go first, how will you handle rooting for your teammate? Because they're on the other team now. <laughs> I mean, for me, it's going to be pretty easy because we don't have, I don't, I don't think anyone from Serbia swing the two fly. The only guy we had, he doesn't want to focus on the two fly. So I'm going to obviously be rooting for Zach. He's the guy to, there that's going to do something big. Um, obviously, we have some people swimming Andre's events, but, uh, and even the other events up, up there for all of our other Olympians, but, I train with these guys on a daily basis, so I'm not going to not root for them. And I might not just say it super loud, but definitely if we don't have anybody in the heat, they're going to get my support. And if I, we do have somebody in the heat, they're still going to get my support. Now, your families won't be able to be there, so what will that be like? And what, Will it be difficult being, at, being finally in the Olympics and mom and dad can't be there? Yeah, so when the news kind of came out that they weren't allowing for, uh, for international spectators, my mom was super distraught, so I gave her a phone call, and she was like, is that final? Or are they sure? And I was like, yeah, I think so. Um, so, so they're pretty bummed about it, but they're going to be on TV watching, and uh, unfortunately, that's going to be how it's going to have to be. Uh, but with the way my family's kind of what they've been going through, I don't know if they would have been able to go anyways. So uh, not being forced not to be able to go might be better than just not being able to make it. So it might be a blessing in disguise. But I'm, they're going to be watching, so all's good. Can I ask you to share? Are you okay with that? Yeah. So my dad has CKD, which is chronic kidney disease. And so basically his one of his – one or both of his kidneys basically start, started attacking – itself and my mom was a donor uh was the donor and it's they had four out of six markers which is a pretty big deal blood relatives don't normally get that high so it's very big from a medical perspective to have a four out of six match and so uh when covid hit my parents got the got the transplant and got that done and my dad's doing a lot better now but uh basically he was dying and my mom was able to step in and save his life and i was able to go in and help them get back on their feet which is Kind of, it was really special for me, and really weird because I had to parent my parents for a little bit. Uh, but it was special for me to be able to be there for them when they had been there for me all this time, and so being able to be there for them was massive. And now they're back on their feet. They're both doing great. They're both. My dad's the, lost so much weight. He's the skinniest he's been since I've been alive, uh, up to date. I'm sure that'll keep going down. My mom's doing good, back working out and stuff, and so. Uh, their lifestyle has changed, their perspective has changed, and it was, the COVID happening was allowed that to happen, and uh, so, yeah, I'm, I'm glad that, that the spectator seating is the way that it is, so that they can't go because of the, if my dad gets COVID, it'd be really bad, so this works out better. Yeah, uh, for me, I'm, so originally my parents weren't even planning to go to Tokyo because I wasn't that close to the cut, so... I didn't know if I was going to make the team until the last minute. So by the time I made the meet, we already know the spectators weren't going to be allowed. So it was, I mean, they would love to go, obviously. They traveled with me everywhere to Singapore when I was a junior. Like, they just traveled to the meets all the time with me and, and give me really good support. And I like having them, them in the stands. Unfortunately, they won't be there in Tokyo, but they'll be home watching it at 5 a.m. in Serbia, which I don't know if they'll stay awake for. I hope they do, but it's going to be fun. <laughs> 